reflect the views or ideas of the staff or management of KWSH or the 110 Broadcast Group. And welcome to Seminole Nation Radio Program. I'm your host today. I'm Edwin Marshall. Uh, I work for the Seminole Nation Language Department. Uh, and I'm joined here by Mr. Joe himself. It's <laughs> Mr. Mr. Seminole Language Program. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Coon, good to have you, Joe. Hey, good to be here. Hey, uh, we got a lot of announcements today. And, uh, oh, but wait a minute. Woman, how you? You're how you? I got to know Mary. She belonged over to know Mary. Now you're Kilkizer and Nagel. Oh, Naga, who's I got to know Mary? She mock Kilkizer, I can go Marlani, who knows, moment from my boy's accent. Nagel Kilkizer, Rosie, and Hog and Heal, and my boy has a Kiltibox and Lea Buckan. Moment is more Kilkizer and a Gilder. This is a uh, <coughs> production of the Seminole Nation Communication Department, and as you know, Joe Bo Whitekiller is the director, and uh, uh, he's not with us today, but uh, we're going to try to do as best we can for Bo. Uh, we're going to get started right here with uh, the report from the Saturday uh, Tribal Council meeting. They had several items on the agenda. Looks like about nine items. Uh, first of all, uh, Tribal Resolution 2 201 a tribal resolution of Seminole Nation of Oklahoma authorized, authorizing the negotiation of the sale of the Grisso Mansion property. Okay, and, and that passed. I don't have the numbers of the votes, but that did pass. Uh, so it looks like that the Grisso Mansion will be put up for sale. Uh, also, tribal resolution 2019-02, sponsored by Gregory Botaw, a tribal resolution of Seminole Nation of Oklahoma approving and authorizing the memorandum of agreement between Global Reconnect LLC and the Seminole Nation Division of Commerce. Uh, that uh, matter was tabled. Uh, then Tribal Resolution 2019-03, a tribal resolution of Seminole Nation of Oklahoma directing the Treasury of Seminole Nation to pay $60,000 quarterly to Grisso Mansion Enterprises LLC and repealing Tribal Resolution 2018-64. Uh, that was passed. Tribal Resolution 2019-04, a resolution of Seminole Nation of Oklahoma appointing Fannie Harjo to the Seminole Nation Early Childhood Committee, and that was a due pass as well. That was sponsored by Anita Lena. And uh, also, to Tribal Resolution 2019-05, sponsored by Regina Lankford, a resolution of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma reappointing Larry Harrison to the Seminole Nation Business and Corporate Regulatory Commission. That was tabled due to uh, a little flaw in the language in the resolution, but that will be brought back. That was tabled on a friendly amendment. Tribal Resolution 2019-06, a resolution of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma reappointing Susie Harjo to the Seminole Nation Business and Corporate Regulatory Commission, the BCR, and that was a due pass, sponsored by Abraham Ferrani. Also, Tribal Resolution 2019-07, sponsored by John Narcomy, a Tribal Resolution of Seminole Nation of Oklahoma authorizing the cultivation of industrial hemp within the <laughs> nation's jurisdiction and authorizing the nation's Attorney General to create tribal go codes governing industrial hemp. Uh, that was tabled and is subject to be brought back. Also, Tribal Resolution 2019-08, sponsored by Patricia Kishkaton, a resolution of Seminole Nation of Oklahoma reappointing Frank Alexander to the Seminole Veterans Affairs Committee. That was a due pass. And finally, Tribal Resolution 2019-09, sponsored by Patricia Kishkaton, a resolution of Seminole Nation of Oklahoma reappointing Barney Mitchell to the Seminole Veterans Affairs Committee. 
that also was a due pass. And those were the items that were voted on that were on the agenda at the council meeting on Saturday. <coughs> As I mentioned, I don't have the exact numbers of the votes, but they, those either passed or were tabled. And now we've got announcements. Uh, Joe, we got church this week. Mm -hmm. Tell us who's having church there. That list right there. Right there. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Agenda Church. Uh, they're over there south of Maud, yeah. southeast of Maud, Alabama. I don't know where that's. I've never been there. Wilika, yeah. Alabama, Quasadi. That's, that's down there between, it's between Wetumpka, Dustin, and Wilika, right about in the center. Oh, okay. And Belvin Baptist up in Oak Mogi. Mm -hmm. Cedar Springs over by Gore. Is yeah. that where that's at? Yeah. And Cold Springs down by the river. South Canadian River, yeah. Hutchijaba over there by uh, Graham, Little Coeta. I don't know where that's at. Stumman Lake or what? Let's see. I get that confused with Little Coeta. I think Little Coeta's probably over around Coeta. Oh, okay. Uh, little Quasadi over here north of Wewoka, and many springs out by the lake, Holdenville Lake, of Moggy Baptist there in Moggy. Is that the one on the east side of town? It's over by Tech, Omogi Tech. By Omogi Tech. I believe uh, Freddie. Oh, Freddie right Lowe's uh, pastor. Okay. There, Prairie Springs over there by Okima. Mm -hmm. uh, Spring Church over there by Sasakwa. Mm -hmm. Will Gufke. That's your church. Uh huh, that's Spring, my church, Spring, Spring Church. church. Yeah. Will Gufke. Mm -hmm. That's over by Eufaula, right? Anna. And West Anna. Eufaula over at Trenton. Mm -hmm. And. No, it's not by Trenton, is it? No, West you, you, you Fall is right by you Fall. Right by you Fall. Mm -hmm. uh, we woke up, uh, is we, it? I think we woke up is Yeager? Methodist. Yeah, Yeager. By Yeager. Uh -huh. And Yardika, way over there by Salem, I and, believe yeah, it is. Yeah, Salem. Mm -hmm. So uh, go and attend your favorite church and and, and enjoy dinner with them and, uh, and have fellowship with and them. And if you want to just get out and travel, there's a church, there's a church meeting this weekend in every corner of... Muskogee area, all mm -hmm. the Creek and Seminole mm -hmm. churches. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, I, I guess uh, you'll be bright and shiny at Spring Church Sunday morning. Won't you? <laughs> I'll be bright and shiny eh, somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. As Joe said, you know, if you heard that church, the list of churches, if you heard one of those in your area, or if those are one of your churches, I uh, look forward to seeing you at church Sunday morning. And uh, next week, we'll give you a new list of church meetings next week. <coughs> All right. Seminole Nation of Oklahoma Early Head Start and Head Start program uh, is currently accepting applications for the current school year. It's kind of a year-round process. Uh, they're getting into the second semester. The program's for native and non-native children, six weeks old to five years old. The hours are from 9 a.m. to 3 o'clock Monday through Friday. They have four sites, Mikasiki Mission, uh, an admin center in Seminole, Barking Water, Wewoka, River Mist, Conewa. They offer free quality services to ensure the education, health, mental health, and social service needs of each child. Uh, so they also serve special needs children. Uh, also, Seminole curriculum, as you know, Joe, is taught in each classroom to enhance Seminole cultural awareness for each child. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a great deal. Those, they do a good job with that. A lot of those kids, you know, kids at the at that level, yeah. head start level, they learn real easy. A lot, they learn really fast. A lot easier than me and you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, we're getting at the age we're starting to forget stuff. Yeah, now. absolutely. <laughs> all right. Hey, we got some job openings. Uh, first of all, Seminole Nation Housing Authority has a position open for procurement specialists. They're responsible for overseeing all of the. Uh, procurement activities, including supplies, materials, equipment, and contracted services. Uh, they also <laughs> promote competition and contracting, ensure that purchasing actions are in full compliance. Uh, so they want somebody with minimum two years working experience in purchasing, accounting, finance, or a closely related field. You can submit your information and application to them at HASNOK, Housing Authority of Seminole Nation of Oklahoma. Attention, Thomasine Osborne, P.O. Box 1493, or you can go by 101 South Hegedia, Wawoka, and that position is open until filled. 
All right, we also got another opening for a district court judge in the Seminole uh, mm. Tribal Court, Seminole Nation Tribal Court. Um, the Seminole Nation is seeking to appoint three district court judges to serve a four-year term. I believe I saw in the council meeting um, the other day that they extended that 90 days mm -hmm. to try to get those opened and uh, candidates will be nominated by the chief and confirmed by the general council. Mm -hmm. uh, for more information you can regarding qualifications and duties, you can visit www.sno-nsn.gov backslash government backslash code of laws and uh, they uh, you know they got to be a licensed attorney uh, is an enrolled member of a federally recognized tribe in good standing with licensing authorities and possess a demonstrated background in tribal court practices uh, there's some other minimum qualifications but if you want to submit a resume you can submit it to Valentina Tiger General Counsel Secretary at P.O. Box 1498 we woke us seven four eight eight four. I don't. I don't guess you and I could do that. Oh, I, I judge the uh, traditional dress at seven <laughs> on nation days. I think I could judge. I know. Uh, I'd be a good judge. Judge the uh, fry bread contest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Job placement and training has a community outreach coming up this Thursday, uh, January thirty first, at the resource center behind the housing authority. Uh, staff will be in the Woolwalk area to answer questions and assist on site regarding employment counseling, creating a resume and, a resume and interview techniques, basic computer skills training available, and information and tips on studying for a driver's license. To be eligible, you must be a member of a federally recognized tribe and live in Seminole County. For more information, you can call D. Whitson at 405-234-5288. Or you can call Sheila Hooper at 405-234-5289. Joe, we got something coming up. Free construction certification training. If you're interested in working in the construction field, and uh, there are some minimal qualifications in a lot of those positions, but this is going to be free training at the Francis Tuttle Technology Center in Oklahoma City, 12777 North Rockwell. It's uh, they've got training in first aid, CPR, and AED. Also training in work zone safety, flagger, if you want to work as a flagger. Uh, also training is forklift, scissor lift. Also training in OSHA 10 certification. Uh, a lot of those things have minimal requirements for a lot of construction jobs. And minorities and females are especially encouraged to apply. Uh, for more information, you can get a hold of them at www.odot.org backslash TAP event. That's www.odot.org backslash TAP event. TAP event. Also, uh, a summer pre-college workshop for American Indian, Alaska Native, Native Hawaiian high school students. All you parents and grandparents out there, pay special attention to this. This is a special program just for Native kids, uh, high school students, probably a, a junior or something like that. And it's a six-day crash course preparing for college application process. Students learn about a variety of colleges and universities and establish personal relationships with college admission reps as well as college counselors. Um, at each site, approximately 100 students from across the nation will work with over 70 college professionals in a lot of areas. Uh, if you're uh, interested in that, uh, two of those sites, uh, one of them is the University of Michigan, that'll be on June the 15th. The other one is Brown University. Where is, do you, do you know where Brown University is, Joe? No, I sure don't. You know, I knew that at once. I, I forgot where that was. Uh, but anyway, it, it'd be a great place for any kid to want to go for the summer and spend a few days mm -hmm. and learn about the college application process. Uh, you can find out more uh, with College Horizons at, here's the email address, info at collegehorizons.org or just look up College Horizons on the internet and I'm sure you'll find it. But that'd be a great program for a high school student from around 
We woke up on Humboldt. Oh, you bet. You know, it's, uh, it's getting very competitive for these uh, scholarships and stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's a good, it would be a good deal to, yeah. to send your kids to this. Thing. And, uh, Real quickly, I want to go through the rest of these announcements. Uh, no, hey, Joe, Muscogee Language Forum. You know right. those forums that we were having earlier? Yeah. February the 15th at the Seminole Nation Housing Authority in Wawoka. It'll last from 11 to 2. And we're going to talk about storytelling, the traditional Muscogee storytelling. Not going to know you might get that what it is. And that'll be, once again, February the 15th on a Friday from 11 to 2. This Saturday night, uh, I believe February the 2nd, Seminole Nation Princess Stomp Dance. Uh, it's a fundraiser for the Seminole Nation Princesses. And that's going to be at the Mixed Mission Gym. Supper's at 5 o'clock. And Dan starts at 7 o'clock, so come on out. Bring your shells. Hey, we're going to go on into, uh, oh, i got one more announcement. Black History uh, Month presentation in honor of Black History Month. All are cordially intended to join Mr. Ron Graham, genealogy chairman for descendants of freedmen and the five civilized tribes. And uh, he's going to make three presentations, including, and this this presentation includes history of the freedmen of the five civilized tribes of all black towns of Oklahoma and the new obtained documents of the territory of Lincoln 1866 treaty Dawes Commission and much more uh, the first one will be at the downtown library in Oklahoma City uh, on February the 2nd from 1 to 2 30 and then next the Ralph Ellison library on February the 9th from 1 to 2 30 and finally at the Oklahoma City Community College uh, that'll be February the 11th I believe it is uh, and uh, uh, got a little mix up on the printing here but that I'm sure the times are the same 1 o'clock 2 30 uh, for more information you can contact Mr. Uh, T-F-L-I-H-N-M at Friedman at G-M-A dot I-T com. And uh, those are your announcements for this week. Joe, we got a pre-recorded interview with uh, Mr. Bo Whitekeller and uh, the one that he did with our Treasury Director at Seminole Nation. And uh, we're going to go right on into that, Dennis, if you would. seem to be having a little technical difficulty uh we'll try to bring that up and we may not get to play all of it but anyway uh joe mm -hmm. what do you think hey i want to talk a little bit about that uh little thing we got coming up on february the 15th uh, the language form uh, it's going to be at the seminole nation housing authority in wewoka mm -hmm. you know we've had what uh, three forums now so far yeah. concerning tribal language and We've had great attendance by our elders at those, and uh, you know it's really picking up steam as far as interest, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think people will really like this one because, you know, a lot of us, and including yourself and a lot of our other elders, we were raised up with those uh, small stories. We call them not what not was it, tales, native tales. Uh, and uh, we're going to highlight that in our next forum. Uh, you got a few stories you're going to be able to tell on that? I might tell one about uh, my dad. They said that uh, where they lived, it was pretty isolated where they lived. And and uh, one time that uh, he come running back into the house and the horses were all scared. They had some plow horses and a riding horse. And, and he came in and locked the door and the horses were screaming and hollering. And uh, Okay, stop right there. We got to leave him in suspense. If you want to hear the rest of the story, come to the conference, right, Joe? Well, I want to tell them this now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, go no, ahead. go ahead. Oh, no, no, because no, 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 we'll have a lot of other yeah. stories. Uh, okay, and then 
And then he come running in, and locked the door, and the, and the horse was crazy out in the, in the, in the corral, and and he told everybody to be quiet, not say anything, and and uh, so anyway, uh, finally they they settled down, and and but he would never tell what was out there. And I think it was, uh, uh, well, I don't know what it was. It might have been bill collector coming around. Well, you know, <laughs> they call him Honka. Honka. <laughs> <laughs> might have been a Honka. Yeah. Honka. You know, when I was growing up, my grandpa was really gifted at telling stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a great talker, a great speaker. And uh, he would tell us a lot of stories about animals. You know, there was... According to Muscogee lore, whether Seminole or Creek, at one time, before there was people, there was animals. Animals was on this earth before people. And before people, animals, they could talk to each other. And they, got, and they, they lived in communities, and they lived a lot like uh, human beings do now. But, you know, human beings got our, we were taught how to live communally by the uh, animals. Uh, but once human beings came to this earth, the animals quit talking and, and the human beings took up the language. But before the animals could talk, and there's a lot of stories about animals mm -hmm. in Muscogee lore. When we were going to school, they used to have a thing called Aesop's Fables. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like those. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of uh, similarity to the way that Aesop's Fables tells stories and gives life lessons and about Indian uh, stories. And so. They're real interesting. I know a lot of them are funny. Some of them will give you life lessons. Uh, some of them teach you how to be a human being mm -hmm. uh, from animal stories. And so we're going to be talking about some of those kinds of things. And I know that we've got several elders that are interested in this. We're going to be there. Mm -hmm. We're going to eat too, ain't we, Joe? Yeah, we're going to eat. We're going to have some some homemade chili and some homemade stew, and uh, I think Ed was going to make, uh, make fry bread. I don't know what day he said that, but uh, <laughs> it sounds good, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> fry bread or cornbread or something. Or animal. something, yeah. 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 Not light bread, though. I'm going to put some jalapenos in that cornbread and, and you know, oh, fire yeah. some of them up. That's good, know, that's good. Like fired that. up for the stories. But uh, anyway, we're going to be doing that. It's going to last from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock, and if, you're, if you have some time that day, uh, come on out. That's February the 15th from 11 till 2. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Becky at the Housing Authority was good enough to let us use that building. It's a real nice building. Yes, over it there. is. Mm -hmm. It sounds real good. It's, I hope somebody decides to sing in there because it sounded really good inside oh, is that, that right? room. Well, we'll yeah. probably do that, too. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. speaking of that, Joe, uh, you, I ordinarily ask you to sing a song for us, and you know, I guess, every song there is to know. But today we're going to close the show out with a song. Uh, you know, the Creek Nation put out a CD along with their calendars, and they got a couple of young men uh, that are singing those songs, and uh, one of them is Ira Walker. He's a citizen of the Seminole Nation. He's digging over here with Woke Baptist, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. His parents are Kellis Walker and the late Martha Kinney, and, uh, and he's married his wife, Stephan Stephanie. Uh, they have three kids. Also joining him is another young man that we're very familiar with, Mr. Paulo Gonzalez. And even though he's an enrolled member of the Choctaw Nation, that boy can sing. Oh, we'll take him. We'll take him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll adopt him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to Sand Creek and Paulo Baptist Church in, uh, for the last 14 years, so you know how he learned his songs, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, they sang them songs at Sand Creek and Paulo. He's just 33 years old, but he's great at hymn singing, and it says here that he uh, got that interest while uh, attending Sequoia Boarding School. Uh, he's the son of Cecilia McKinney and the grandson of the late John McKinney. And his wife's name is Destiny, and they have two children. Like I said, he goes to Sand Creek, Ufala, and uh, Ira is over here. We woke in in Baptist, so, uh, you know, we see them around a lot at a lot of church services, wake services. And matter of fact, uh, I sat right next to those guys, I think, the other day at the funeral service uh, that I attended. And, uh, man, I'll tell you, we had some good singing that day, yeah. along with all the other people at Sand Creek Fuller. You know, they really like to sing over there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
You know, I went to Sequoia too, and I didn't see uh, I didn't see Paulo up there. <laughs> I think there might be a little bit age difference, Joe. Well, I, I, well, I was kind of old when I graduated. But... <laughs> Did you graduate at Sequoia? Uh, yeah, they released me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> on waivers. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we're going to be closing out with a song to those guys and. Uh, we uh, really thank uh, the folks over at Muskogee Creek Nation for producing that CD. It's a real nice CD, and the calendar's real nice, and they even got the list of church meetings on there. So, you know, being that we speak the same language, the Muskogee language, you know, there's a, when it comes to church and the ceremonial grounds, there's no difference in whether you're Creek or Seminole. You're all Muskogee. That's right. So every, all, all those things are the same. So... Uh, it's, it makes it good because we get to sing the same songs and attend the same ceremonies and things like that. Okay, well, I'll tell you, I don't, don't think we're able to get that interview up. We'll play it next week. Uh, that's the interview uh, with uh, Mr. Cootie. And, uh, uh, but in the meantime, uh, if you have any information that you'd like to announce in regards to the tribe or the bands or anything officially with the Seminole Nation or some activity, whether it's church or social activity regarding the Seminole Nation people, uh, you can contact Bo Whitekiller, uh, and uh, he will be glad to put that information on the air. Joe, you got something else yeah, you want to share with us? Yeah, I'm involved with uh, East Central University. We I teach uh, the Muscogee language there. I just started. And they're doing uh, some things to in, to involve our our students over there in the traditional uh, things. And uh, we have a, a young man. He's a Ponca, and he's his name is Melvin. Calls him, and he's going to be teaching uh, singing at the drum on uh, <coughs> social dances. Oh yeah. And so if you don't have to know anything, you, if you got a little bit of rhythm, it helps. I didn't have the rhythm, but. But uh, but uh, I I played a drum over there and tried to sing with That's him. That's your wife's punker, right? Yeah, she's punker. Okay, yeah, so, so you kind of you've been around that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I heard a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah. but uh, but uh, but yeah, we're going to start on uh, Monday night, February the fifth, and it starts at six, six o'clock and it's over at seven o'clock. So we we would sure invite you to come. It's over at the. Uh, uh, Horace Mann and uh, Faust Hall okay. in the auditorium. All right. And it starts at 6 o'clock, February 5th. Okay. Meadow Joe. All right. We're going to close out the radio show, like I said a while ago, with a song, a Muskogee hymn song by Ira Walker and Paulo Gonzalez. So we'll see you right back here next week on KWSH 1260 AM for the Seminole Nation radio show. <laughs>